Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my absolute honor and pleasure to be speaking with you here today. And a huge shout out to the TED team. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for putting together such a show. Today I want to talk a bit about beginning with adventure. What does that mean to begin with adventure? It means to take a step into a different zone, into a zone that you don't even know is possible. So a few years ago, I was in a place that was very similar to a lot of people in Hong Kong. I was doing the usual thing. You go into high school solely so that you can get good grades. Once you get good grades, you try and apply to a great college. Once you get into a great college, you try and get great grades again. And then from there, you try and get a great internship. And then after you get a great internship, you try and get another job. And then you get another job, and you get another job, and this journey just follows down this traditional route over and over. And I felt that that was the only thing to do. How many of you feel like that? Is that something that you feel is, it's just, it's just the route, right? That, that is exactly what you have to do, and nothing else can be possible. A lot of people, including myself, in Hong Kong feel like that because you have to go down the route to be a banker or an accountant and all. So guess what? That's what I did. I got up and a few years later I started my career as an investment banker in New York. This was essentially the dream coming true for me. Everything I'd worked for throughout high school, college, the culmination of all these years of finally following the route with the word adventure not even being a part. When I got there, even though the work was exciting, even though there was a lot of long hours, even though I was living in New York, working as an investment banker, I realized this insatiable craving. I felt that there was something missing, that I needed a bit more adventure than just going in and doing my job every day. So this kept going, and I kept ignoring it, and then finally it got to a point where I couldn't ignore it. I felt something very, very dear inside me saying that you have to go out there and see what's out there. There has to be a sense of adventure more than just what you've done your entire life, what everyone tells you to do. So much like most people wouldn't do when they're 23, I bought a one-way ticket to Peru and that changed everything. I packed everything in a box and shipped it away and I found myself in Peru and I thought I'd lost my mind. Everyone thought I'd lost my mind, but I definitely thought I'd lost my mind. So that turned into a, a journey around uh, six months over 27 countries. I went to Bolivia, I went to Bosnia, I went to Jordan, I went to Iran, and every day I challenged myself to do something filled with adventure, something that would scare me, whether it's jumping off a cliff, whether it's power motoring, whether it's trying some Bolivian delicacy. And that was great for a certain point because that was the most rewarding period of adventure. I'd never felt such freedom and such energy with every single day. But as I went through all these countries, I also realized something else. It's not everyone that has a chance to experience adventure. Most people are trapped in a certain way of doing, a certain lifestyle, just like I did throughout my life growing up in Hong Kong. I noticed in Bolivia that some miners only make seven US dollars at the age of 12 or 14, and that they have to risk their lives every single day to make seven US dollars. I noticed that education is what stops someone having a career as a waiter or maybe something else, something bigger with adventure and enthusiasm. And I came to this realization in every part of the world that I went to, that education could really have an impact or a correlation on someone's economic prosperity or a community's economic prosperity. And that's a very powerful thing to note that education is the greatest opportunity for human empowerment. The most powerful thing that someone could do is have access to affordable, high quality education because that's when they start to have hope. And that's when they start to have a chance of adventure. And this whole realization became very clear to me when I had a chance to work with a municipality in Namibia. So I had a chance to work with a school project where because of our work, we were able to build a school that allowed thousands of students in the future to have free education. And all of those thousands of students could go contribute to their community and become something more. And that was amazing because I realized that what you call adventure, leaving a job, could also be tied to contribution, right? You could find a way to tie your adventure to something that actually makes an impact on the people around you. And that was so powerful. It still makes my hairs light up. So I came to this realization and along the way, as I finally concluded this trip of adventure, I came back to Hong Kong. And I'm not gonna lie, I was very let down. I came back home to Hong Kong after all these years and I was let down because I thought Hong Kong could be so much more. We are behind. We are behind because 
our education systems are dragging us behind. We are behind because we look at grades and exams and all we focus on every day is passing those exams and listening to our teachers and boring lectures. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> but jokes aside, that's a real problem. And if we don't solve this, we're going to have an even bigger problem because artificial intelligence, the convergence of quantum computing, increasing amounts of data in the trillions of gigabytes are creating the fourth industrial revolution. And that's happening right now. So that means in the next 15 to 20 years, in your lifetimes, in your careers, many of you are starting careers right now, what you're looking to do right after you get this next successful internship, is going to change completely. If you want to be an accountant, that job might not even exist in 20 years. And for many people, that's really scary. For many societies or governments, that is a really, really difficult thing to fathom. But at the same time, it's a great adventure. It's a great adventure because it asks us, what can we do to change that? And for me, that answer of trying to question all these uh, ideas of grade or traditional route memorization comes with this idea of blended learning. Blended learning to me is the future of education. Blended learning to me is how we can train critical thinkers, people who are problem solvers, people who have knowledge of things like robotics or IoT or data analytics or data science or blockchain, whatever it is. The point is that those skills don't exist right now. We equip them with those skills. They have those skills and they're able to use those skills in a job that will actually come to exist, especially if it doesn't exist right now. So I set upon starting this company called Accelerate a few years ago and I applied those same principles that if we could solve this education crisis, if we could give Hong Kong more talent, not just more co-working spaces or more investors or more uh, government grants. If we could give Hong Kong more talent, that would be such an inspiring thing because Hong Kong could move forward then. Hong Kong, if we had another 500 data scientists working in hospitals and investigating how machine learning could apply to lung cancer detection, that pushes the baton forward. Or if you have another 1,000 software engineers solving problems around uh, addressing our ocean problems, Right? Trying to direct young, talented people like yourselves to learn the skills of the future and ask, can you contribute to a sense of adventure that is related to something greater than you is something that I feel so, so passionate about because of the ripple effect, the externality that we empower smart people and they together find a sense of adventure in solving things together. Right? So in the last few years, I'm absolutely delighted to see that so many people um, are able to share this vision that myself and, and the team have built. It's, it's gone through this journey of taking hundreds of people from banker or lawyer or accountant. I've even seen construction workers. I've even seen immigration officers. I've even seen drivers. I wanted to show that it doesn't matter who you are, what you are. It doesn't matter if you're 50 or 20, that if you have that sense of adventure and you approach education with that same sense of adventure, you could change your life. You could learn how to learn. You could learn lifelong skills that would allow you to transition your career and the success is remarkable of what we've seen. We've seen all these people from construction work or whatever it is get jobs and it's so exciting because now they get to go solve the challenges that many of these innovative startups are facing. So by solving the talent shortage, using education, making education more affordable or accessible, we can empower innovation. And once you empower innovation, a lot of great things can happen. The country, the city can move forward. So if that can work in Hong Kong, I started thinking, what if that could work around the world? It sounds a little bit too grand, but why not? I mean, follow the sense of adventure. So now our vision has evolved into something even greater and grander. If we can build blended learning classrooms in Hong Kong and they can empower all these talented people to go learn the skills of the future in Hong Kong, why can't we build a platform? Why can't we build something that allows this to be replicated a thousand times or 10,000 times? And that means we could bring education to everyone, especially in those places like Bolivia and Namibia, but everywhere, right? And for me, that can be done with technology. So we're very excited about what artificial intelligence can do for education. Imagine if you had an AI assistant. So if you didn't have a teacher or if there was a bottleneck of teachers, which is the major bottleneck in a lot of areas around the world. 
that you could solve that with a chatbot or you could solve that with a facilitator who's also using AI to give you personalized recommendations. So your technology is your companion and it allows you to get a high quality learning experience where you focus instead of learning through route memorization to pass an exam on solving real world challenges. You learn persistence, you learn grit, you learn passion and you're able to use those in the future. Right? And this really reminds me a lot of this idea of always be skating towards where the puck is. Right? Always go where the future is. And I think too many young people today are so excited and, and, and sorry, not excited. They're, they're only just thinking about this one option that I have to go down that route, the same route that I felt. And there's no choice even. There's not even a sense that an adventure is possible. And I'm here to challenge each and every one of you to tell you that it is possible, no matter how crazy that adventure is. So, like I said, the world is going through this industrial revolution. A lot of education systems have not kept up. They're training us in things that are 20 years old. What are we going to do? If we can bring blended learning, advanced education to the masses, then we can help entire economies, entire industries, entire governments prepare themselves so that in the future, when new jobs and AI or robotics are out there, people can find fulfilling careers. But in order for that to happen, they have to begin with adventure. They have to begin with the idea that it is happening. This is happening right now and that they have to absorb this concept of lifelong learning. Everything you've learned till date, everything you've gotten in your experience so far is probably redundant. And if you don't do anything about it, if you don't open yourself to the idea of a new adventure or a new career, you're gonna stay redundant and I don't think that is anyone here. No one here wants to be redundant. Mm -hmm. So I want to wrap up the next few minutes with a few things that I learned along the way. The first is that when you begin with adventure, don't expect that it'll be easy. It will be anything but easy. And when you try and take this uh, off-trodden path, when you try and go start a company or try and make an impact, um, everyone, is gonna to come to you and try and pull you down. There's gonna be so many instances of failures and setbacks. That does not mean you should question if you took the right choice of finding your adventure. If you truly listened inside you and found out whether or not that adventure was the right thing for you. A lot of people after the first few setbacks, they regret it and then they go straight back into their sense of regret. Why did I take that adventure? Why was I crazy enough? Don't worry about that. It will happen and it will continue to happen so long as you can continue to align yourself to that sense of adventure. That adventure is what keeps you excited, right? That adventure is something that you know inside your heart is something that you are very, very keen to do. And I find that in education especially, it starts with that mindset. The second thing is if you're gonna have a sense of adventure, if you're gonna begin with adventure, it makes absolutely no sense to begin with a small adventure. Does that make any sense to you? If you're gonna go do this entire jump, are you gonna jump yourself into a small adventure or are you gonna jump yourself into a big adventure? How many people say big adventure? Big, right, big. Big adventure is the right thing to do. So when you're gonna go out there and you wanna solve these problems of the world or you're gonna try and uh, go into an adventure where you can go uh, address certain um, knowledge gaps that you have right now through education, make sure that you can do that with a big adventure. And I think the last point is you have to have to try and tie it back to contribution. I mean, the, there's so many things in the world that you could build. You could build noodle stores, you could build e-commerce stores, you could build a lot of things, but where I fe feel a lot of young people would find so much enthusiasm in going down these routes of learning advanced technologies and applying them to world problems that is if those problems matter, right? Does that make sense to some of the young people here? Could I get a raise of hands? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does? Okay, so the idea is if you're gonna go out there and find a sense of adventure, isn't it so much more exciting and enthusiastic for you that you're using that adventure to solve a real world problem? Whether it's climate change, whether it's that lung cancer example I gave you, but if you can do that, on something that's a very real problem, you'll feel a certain sense of shared adventure, and that is the most powerful thing, right? Your adventure can be shared with other people. So I wanna wrap up with one last thought, 
and that is that this world is changing very fast. Every industry is about to go through a rapid amount of change through all these things that are already talked about. Every government is going to have to face these challenges and questions, and every single individual sitting here in your careers and your lifetimes are going to have to go through the same questions. And I ask you all to try and begin that with adventure. Thank you so much. It is my absolute honor and pleasure to be here.